you're a man of music. You're a singer, yeah. So, uh, well, well, first off, welcome. Uh, so, what, when did you start out with uh, with music? You know, and singing. When did when did that moment occur to you? Oh, it. it uh, I was very young when I. My father was already a musician, and uh, my grandfather too. And so I'm maybe from a dynasty of musicians, and there was music in my family through all the years. And and I started singing maybe when I was three or four years old, and I sang, sang for Santa Claus, Lieber uh, guter Weihnachtsmann. And later, when I was going to school, I uh, was singing in the choir, in the school mm. choir. And it's, this is my advice for everybody who wants to sing and learn to sing. Go to the school or to the church choir and sing with other people. And it's so much fun. And it's so nice to experience the harmony of a good choir. Oh, yes, definitely. And you know a lot about that. Um, yes. You know. Meanwhile. So, yes. So your family supported you with doing. Yes, music. of course. My family always supported me. Uh, yes, I had a, a lot of other interests. I'm some kind of uh, scientist already. When I was a young boy, mm -hmm. I made uh, chemistry and, and biological experiment, and I was very good at school with. Uh, with uh, nature sciences mm. but then uh, <laughs> the virus of rock and roll music infected me severely and oh. i could not stop playing i was maybe 12 or 13 years old when i formed my first band and mm. that was the beginning of the of the beat music that came over from uh, from the uk from the united kingdom mm. And the Rolling Stones started and the Beatles started and we just formed a band like that and played all these tunes that we could uh, listen at the radio. Mm. So I was already, already playing when I was 14 years old for a big and for a huge audience. And uh, so <laughs> I really started very, very early. Wow. Yes, and yeah. when I finished school, I wanted to go to university, but some of my plans, they failed. And then I got an offer that I could not refuse from a very famous German band. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, okay, join this band and uh, earn a little bit money. You can make it for a year or two, and then you have money enough to go to university for studying. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> I, I was always playing in a band since that. Ah. Uh, so, so you've been I, doing I'm music. I'm a professional yeah. since, I'm since I'm 19. Oh, my God. That's a long time. Yes. This is... well, actually, I have a question. If for whatever reason you wouldn't be doing music at the moment, what do you think you would have done if not music? What career I just path told would you, I would chosen? have been a scientist for chemistry. Mm, okay. Yes or maybe bio biology and uh, yes this oh. was my interest i was good in mathematics and and uh, yes and sciences and this was my plan but it failed i uh, i yes i had plans but they failed and then i got this offer from a professional band and i said okay let's try it and as I told you, since then I, I'm playing, I'm playing, playing, mm. and performing, and uh, rock the audience. Yes, and which German band gave you this offer? That name was Phantom Brothers. Maybe you ever heard from Hamburg Reeperbahn. There was a club, mm. the Star Club, the Star Club. All the stars of the of the Western Hemisphere they played at the Star Club. It was Ray Charles, it was Jerry Lee Lewis, it was even the Beatles who played there. And uh, this band was one of local heroes, I can say so, that they were local heroes and they played, they were a band of this uh, Star Club. And mm. uh, 
but it was already the end of this area and uh, yeah so i did not have was was so successful with this band and i only stayed there for one year the phantom brothers you can google that maybe you will find something you will find on my facebook there's a gallery of photos from all my uh, former bands that i played with mm. and, uh, you can go to my Facebook and see a lot of photos there. Okay. You're a That's friend cool. of mine now. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, we joined this night, huh? didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we're having a nice chat here. And do you still perform? Do you still sing with the Systems in Blue, for example? Yes, I sing, but uh, <laughs> I'm 73 now. Mm, and yes. Uh, I have some handicaps with uh, with walking. I had a very uh, severe uh, <laughs> defects defects in my spine, mm. in my backbone, and I've been at uh, uh, at the hospital, and they made a lot of operations to get me up back to my feet. Mm -hmm. But I'm not uh, so uh, so fast as I was when yes five years ago. I was uh, I was better off than now but i can uh. sing and i can talk and i can compose and i can record and uh, so it, it's not that bad i can i can still make music this is most important yes and, and i i made such a lot of many <laughs> performances through all the decades <laughs> uh, i don't miss it too much to be ah uh to be in the center of the uh, the interests of the audience now it's uh, i can uh, show myself on facebook or youtube and uh, we yeah. release our records mm -hmm. rather frequently and uh, so i have a lot to do well that's amazing you know i mean a lot of people at this age they're they're happy to be just uh, being alive, I suppose, you know, it's hard for them to do anything. Everybody should be happy to be alive. Yes, and, and it's, it's a, so nice to it's see a you. Gift. Yes, it's a, it's a great gift. And what are you up to nowadays? So you, you still sing, you, and you will be singing for yeah. some time, yes? Yeah, Systems in Blue is, uh, will have anniversary, 20th anniversary next year. Mm -hmm. It's already it has, since 2003 mm -hmm. on the scene, mm -hmm. and uh, we will have some uh, yes, some jubilee releases with uh, yes. We are already we are already preparing uh, things for next year for our 20th anniversary, and then I have a project in with a with a man from uh, Paris. His yes. name is Johan Perrier and uh, I make a lot of singles with him mm -hmm. in Deep House style. It's totally different. It's not 80s. It's it's modern dance floor music that we make and we just yes. finished our, our latest uh, release. Name is Sally. You can find it on YouTube and on Spotify Music Load and iTunes and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's running, all our singles are running very well. So Johan Perrier and I, we make the compositions. Johan makes the sound uh, mm -hmm. and I make the singing at home. And uh, yeah, we communicate with the uh, internet, of course. It's yes. rather comfortable nowadays uh, things <laughs> yes. to, to uh, succeed with things that was uh, impossible in former times without internet. You should mm -hmm. always travel to places and go to yes. expensive yes. studios. And <laughs> now I have the opportunity to record myself on my computer with the Logic uh, mm -hmm. digital audio workstation. And uh, yeah, this is no problem. Then we, then we put it together and we construct our music with internet and yeah it's okay that's very wonderful
Uh, you know, and that's what I wanted to ask. So what differences did you notice in music production? You know, I mean, you worked in the in this industry in the 80s, too. So if we compare the 80s and now, what differences do you think have Ooh. been made? Yes. <laughs> During the 60s and 70s, the, uh, the technical progress was immense. When the Beatles and the Rolling uh, Stones started to record, they had only two tracks. And you should always, you should always perform your, your songs with the whole band. And it was very, very, very difficult to, uh, <laughs> to succeed with producing complex mm -hmm. music with only two tracks. Then they had four tracks, eight tracks, And I think the yeah the first sixteen track uh, tape recorder was uh, was ready in the end of the sixties and in the seventeenth seventies they succeeded to make a twenty four track recording possible with a very very uh, thick uh, broad uh, tape and you had twenty four. Mm -hmm. 24 tracks to uh, to make layers on it and the recording changed you could uh -huh. play only one instrument and then add the next and the next and the next and then the be beginning end of the 17th and the beginning of the 80s there was a digital revolution synthesizers came and uh, uh, an interface it, it's still called MIDI It's mm -hmm. musical instrument digital interface. So it was possible to connect tapes and synthesizers by, by time code. It was SMPTE. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you had one, one signal uh, uh, track on your, uh, on your tape recorder, like and it mm -hmm. could synchronize The whole, the whole gear that you had on start in your studio, all the synthesizers could play synchronously with a tape. And this was the revolution in the 80s. In the beginning of mm. the 80s, all productions, they were uh, supported by electronic drums, like Lin drums. You could program uh, The, the drum tracks you could you did not play there was no drummer playing it was samples that were triggered by by this uh, midi by this musical in instrument digital interface and uh, yet you can remember uh, records from michael jackson and thriller or this all these yes yes and uh, all the drum tracks they were from lin drums programmed And bases were programmed by syn by with synthesizers. And not so many instruments were played anymore. They were programmed. But anyway, you need skills and uh, yes, and, and perfection in playing anyway. But uh, the mode and the the procedure of producing was completely different than in the 60s and 70s. So this was the yes. revolution. of the 80s and a lot of new sounds appeared on the scene and everybody was eager to uh, <laughs> to evolve new sounds and it was a kind of competition who has the coolest sounds from synthesizers or from first guitars and yes mm. this this was the real revolution in the beginning of the 80s and to the Today, all there are no tape recorders anymore. Everything is digitalized, and then even yeah, this uh, digital recording it was another revolution for uh, for the process of uh, producing. Uh huh. Yeah, and it, it is for the better. All started in the 80s with this musical instrument digital interface. Hmm. Well, it is much better now that we have. digital audio you know and you can record anywhere and any yes. any whenever you want wherever you want and wherever you, have a, you want you have a 
perfect camera and even a video recorder always in your pocket. It's it's amazing. Yes, yes, that's right. You know what? I always wanted to ask you these questions, but uh, you, and I'm not sure if you already were a team at that time, when you collaborated with Modern Talking back in the 80s. Uh, yes. I... Uh, did you already knew Detlef and Rolf at the time? Yes, we had a band. Yes. We had a band. This band was uh, called Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And it was a rock and roll and cover band. We played for audience uh, around our counties and... Uh, we always had four or five thousand people uh, celebrating rock and roll and we were a very, very good band. I have a YouTube channel with this Kentucky. You can find uh -huh. it on with my name, Michael Scholz, and then Kentucky, and then you will find a lot of videos that uh, I already made from recordings, from very mm -hmm. old and vintage recordings. So we were a band. And, Many, many, many of our musicians, they were used later by Dieter Bohlen. We had a girl, mm. we had, uh, no, not only one, we had girl singers. And mm. sometimes uh, Dieter needed uh, for intro, from, for intro uh, of his uh, singles, he needed a female voice when you, ah! and, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> So it was Marion and Madeleine and Tutti who were our singers in the band. And yes, mm. and, uh, Dieter all <laughs> used our talents to, mm. yeah, to, to realize oh. his ambitions. Yeah, It's almost like a talent pool you had there. Well, what I wanted to ask is, so how did all this collaboration start with you? Uh, yeah, I told you, we had a band and Rolf Köhler and I and uh, a man who was in the band too, its name is Birger Korleis. We had a project that was called Straight Flush. And mm -hmm. we, we made a single and it was rather successful. It was uh, Dancing in the Sunlight. Uh, you will find that, <laughs> of course, on YouTube and uh, you can find it even on Spotify, I think. Uh, we had this uh, in 1983, we released this uh, project Straight Flush. And it was at the same mm -hmm. company as uh, where Dieter Bohlen worked as a, yes, as a composer. He was just employed by this uh, enterprise. Uh. It was Intercord, this this enterprise. It, they make a lot of records and they had a, a distributor and everything. And Dieter listened to our single and he liked our, the sound of our voices. And one day he invited us for studio to mm. record some songs with a, a German singer, a just normal young German singer. His name was Thomas Anders. And we recorded mm -hmm. at uh, what was later called Studio 33. At that time, it was Teldec, Teldec Studios. Mm. And uh, recorded, recorded German songs. And there was one song between, it was in English, and it was totally different. And this mm. was You're My Heart, You're My Soul. There was yes. no idea about modern talking. It was just this producer and composer Dieter Bowen and it was the mm -hmm. Schlager singer, singer uh, German singer uh, Thomas Anders who made mm -hmm. normally German Schlager. It's called Schlager. Ah, Schlager. Yeah, it's, yes. it's just popular music in Germany. Yes. And this song, You're My Heart, You're My Soul, it, it was totally different. And mm -hmm. yes, it took us a long, the whole afternoon, it took us the whole afternoon to find the right, uh, the right sound. And we did this uh -huh. and this and that. And then for the chorus, you're my heart, you're my soul. Yes, yeah. We, we tried a lot of different uh, voice sounds. 
problems. And in the end, we decided, oh, let's try like the Bee Gees, like the Saturday Night Fever sound. Mm. Stay in the life, stay in the life. That yeah. This, this was the idea behind. And Dieter said, that, this is it. And we made it like that. And then they mm. tried to sell this song because there yes. was no project about modern talking. And then the artist and repertoire uh, persons of the record company, they uh, they said, uh, we need a name for that. And then they invented this modern talking. And this single was very, 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 very successful. Out of yes. the blue, it was number one in European and the all European uh, radio stations and discos mm -hmm. charts and it was without any uh, ad uh, advertising or nothing there was nothing and even the pictures if you remember the first single that they made it was, was with two sneakers on the on the cover yes 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 and yes and it was uh, are they queer are they gay or are, no, are they not? Uh, who, what, what, what? <laughs> yes. But then it was so successful. And so we had now this pattern for producing successful songs. And then it mm -hmm. took maybe three or four months. Then Dieter came out with another idea. It was, uh, you can win if you want. And mm -hmm. we made, recorded this song, if you uh, remember, we recorded this in this with this pattern. Thomas sings, mm -hmm. then there will be a bridge with the choir and Thomas, and then there yes. will be then there will be the heart uh, the part with this falsetto, and this was only only uh, our choir. Dieter never sang mm -hmm. with this choir, and Thomas he, uh, even uh, he uh, d uh, sang only his parts, and uh -huh. yes, and this. Uh, uh, Next single was number one again, and mm -hmm. then we produced uh, Sherry Sherry Lady. It mm -hmm. was again very successful, and then the company decided to make a long player. Well, let me ask you this question, because to you it was already pretty, pretty uh, obvious that they are getting big and that they were successful. So did you get any success for you? For the people of Kentucky, was there anything? No, it that you was gained? not. It was not our advantage. We just made, <laughs> we just made a buyout contract. We had we got paid at the studio for our singing sessions, and uh -huh. we did not have any royalties or any copyrights on that. And uh, then we tried to, yeah, to make negotiations with uh, DJ, and he promised us to give us a share, a small share, but it would have made us all millionaires. But he never, uh -huh. but he never, uh, <laughs> he was never behind his words and he never kept his promises. That's so then terrible. one day, Modern Talking split after the sixth album and uh, Blue System started. It was the same pattern, only that... Uh, Mm -hmm. Thomas was changed by Dieter. He he sang this uh, this uh, lyrics from from the verses. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, and then it was Rolf Köhler and the rest of the band and who made the yes. the vocal sounds. Yeah, speaking of Blue System, you know. Uh... A lot of people, uh, well, also modern talking was like that. But apparently, Dieter Bolin is is behind it. But you were the people who did like the vocals for Blue System. Like he was barely in there, wasn't he? Uh, what he was uh, only only and uh, with Blue System, he was only singing the 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 verses. But you can yes. easily you can easily follow. Where mm -hmm. when when he sings and when we start to sing, this is always a very very different uh, kind of voice sound. It's <laughs> yes, easy easy to distinguish. It's easy to make difference between someone who can sing and someone who can't really sing. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't mean to be rude, but I mean we heard 
the demos of Dieter Bolin, you know, the modern talking demos, and yeah. he was singing <laughs> there. So we know how that sounded like. So yeah, we know this that. was always our uh, this was always our blueprint that we a that trademark. We got. Yeah, yeah, and we, we are, made music yeah. from it. After that, we gave it the spirit and the and the yes. soul. Definitely, definitely. You're getting back to modern talking and Thomas Sanders, you know. Uh, so Th Thomas, Ander Thomas Sanders could sing, yeah? We knew that. But of uh, was there a reason he couldn't sing the choruses, the choirs? Or why? Or, or was he not even planned? Like Dieter didn't want him in there? I don't know. We always came only for singing mm -hmm. um, our parts. And after ah. we had this success with "You're My Heart, You're My Soul," I told you it was it. There was a pattern, there was a pattern, yes. and there was a blueprint for making. There was a real structure plan, I say, for mm -hmm. composing and uh, introducing modern talking style. And so when we mm -hmm. came, Thomas always was there. They, he had been there already and sang his parts. And then we came, and even the playback, the whole uh, the whole production was very very rough. There was only drums, there was mm -hmm. a, a harmony pad, and there was a bass. Nothing else, maybe some mm -hmm. rhythmic in, uh, elements. But production was always made after everybody delivered uh, the vocals. So to, mm -hmm. uh, firstly, Thomas came came and made his vocals. Then yes. we, we were invited to come to studio session to make our parts. And uh, yes, and for, uh, for live, for live uh, performances or television or something else, performances, Dieter never took us. Uh, he mm. always uh, was very, very eager to hide us in the back. Not uh -huh. uh, that, uh, that the fans can see us. They did mm -hmm. not know that we are existing at all. Everybody thought Dieter Bowen is singing, you know? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, uh, they always, well, lip synced, but we knew Thomas could sing, yeah? So they just, the people, the fans thought it was uh, Dieter and, you know, Thomas together doing the chorus. But This at, is uh, how they performed it. They, yeah. Everybody should think, okay. Now they change the attitude and mm -hmm. how they sing the high the high falsettos, but yeah. <laughs> it was somebody else. Yeah, and uh, you know that's just terrible. So, so you never sang with uh, Dieter and uh, Thomas live, never. No, never. Okay. No, we were uh, we were twice at the uh, Eurovision Song Contest, mm -hmm. once for Germany and twice for for Austria, and this was <laughs> where he needed a real choir, not only, not only actors or models that he could mm -hmm. produce, the, the, he needed real singers. So we came to Lausanne in 1988, 1989, and we came to Malmö uh, 1992, I think it was, this was the only, uh, the only opportunities where we were uh, live on stage with one of the uh, of the artists of Dieter Bohlen. It was for mm -hmm. uh, Nino De Angelo. It was for Thomas Forstner, and it was for uh, Tony Vegas. So mm. these three uh, singers we supported with choir on the Euro Eurovision Song Contest. And you can find mm. videos from that performance. I have seen that. YouTube. I'm yeah. pretty sure I have seen that, yes. Well, getting back to modern talking, and we, we will be talking about Systems in Blue a bit later, but so do you have any favorite song from modern talking? Anything that you personally like? Yes, You're My Heart, You're My Soul. It's unique. Yes, uh, yes, and it's even one of the best productions because it's very simple mm -hmm. in the structure, and it, you, it's very, very uh, transparent. You can listen all instruments and all melody lines, 
Mm, I like Atlantis is calling. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, not too much from the later ones. Uh, it was uh, yeah, repeating and repeating and repeating always the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The same, uh, yeah. The same style, the, yes. The same style and structure. Yes, and I also have a question. Uh, if if you think which song from Modern Talking was the most difficult to sing, if there is any. Atlantis is calling what was very exhausting because mm -hmm. it's very, very, very high Yeah. Uh, for the falsetto. It goes up to F sharp. Mm, and that's where, yeah. know where, where <laughs> how high this is. It's just for soprano, for for very high girl singers. And yes, we we worked a lot and hard, very hard on that part because the mm -hmm. second harmony of the melody it was going up to this F sharp. And uh, at that time you should sing the whole song. Today you can sing one part. And then you may copy and paste to the next, to the next, to the next. At mm -hmm. that time, you should sing from the first bar to the last crash. And uh, yeah, this was very, it was very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, I believe you, especially now that you said that you had to record the whole song, not and you couldn't just copy and paste it Big, different times. Those were, yeah. Um... Yes, I thought You Can Win If You Want is also one of the harder ones to sing, or at least that's what I noticed. Yes, I but yes, we were we uh, were very fit because we played each weekend two or three times with our band. So we were really good in training and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and we were we were a real group. We were really like family and we were good friends. We did not have any quarrels or any uh, bad discussions or controversies. And so it, for us, it was, it was just fun going to the studio, performing our parts and knowing that we are the ones that can realize these uh, mm. sounds that they wanted from us. Mm -hmm. And also, did you record these like one by one or all of you together in there, in the studio? Uh, the procedure was we first uh, extracted the melody, the main melody. Mm -hmm. Then we fixed this main melody and all the four persons, the first Modern Talking uh, six albums were sung by four persons. It was Detlef, Wiedeke, was Birger Korleis, Rolf Köhler, and Michael Scholz. Uh, mm -hmm. And we sang one melody, one melody, only without harmony. And then we constructed the harmony voices above and below, and we made uh, unisono, the four persons, made this new melody line. And of course, mm -hmm. each one was doubled at that time, maybe even mm -hmm three or four times doubled. But there, mm. were, there were not so many tracks. We had only four, 24 tracks. And uh, so we should be thrifty with uh, using tracks. Okay. And so we, yeah, this was our, this was our procedure. Maybe we invented that, uh, yeah, due to the possibility to make layers on a multi-track tape recorder. So we sang unisono, one melody line, then the first harmony, unisono, and then the third harmony, unisono, and then Luis Rodriguez put these three or four even uh, vocal lines, he put it together as a choir. Mm, and it sounded great. Of course, yeah, still today it sounds great. Yes, it's I very agree. stylish. I agree totally. Um, you know, getting on to Systems in Blue, it was formed in 2003, and knowing that you worked on or worked with Blue System, 
was there any inspiration with the name between the two bands or or why did you give it the name systems in blue like this uh, is all we want to have this is a this is a, a, <laughs> a bit, yeah, remarkable story we in the beginning of the new century we had a we went to court we wanted to uh, have uh, our rights for modern talking because uh, we were yeah we were not content with the conditions that we had with the contract and uh, end of the 19th i think it was 1998 there was the second uh, start of modern talking and they used a lot of our old tracks and one of the lawyers that we knew then he said okay i think we can we can uh, achieve some advantage uh, ad ad advantages for you and then we went to court and it was a disaster our lawyer uh, he failed with this uh, with his strategy and in the end we got we got paid a small amount of money and were uh, yes and were <sighs> to keep our mouth we were forced to keep uh, in silence with uh, our secrets. So this was the end of uh, the collaboration with Gita. And then there was silence for, for some years. And yes, then it was time when the internet started with forum and this and that. And some fans came to us. They had already the name uh, and the domain for Systems in Blue. And they said, "Okay, let's uh, let's go to the boys and ask if they want to continue without Dieter." And uh, yes, and there was one man. He made a lot of lyrics for us. It was this Thomas Vidrat, and he really, he really, uh, yeah, succeeded to to make us to try. Uh, Systems in Blue, and we recorded the symphony and the then no, we, uh, yeah, we recorded three songs. Uh, there's a systems in blue, and uh, it's a magic symphony. I think it was this and uh, Sexy Ann. I think these were the three, uh, the first song that we recorded, and then we got a contract with a record company and. It took uh, maybe a, a year or one and a half. And then uh, the man from our record company said, oh, let's make an album. And we made this album, uh, uh, Point of No Return. And mm -hmm. yes, it was rather successful. And a few, but few uh, years later, we started our second album. And then uh, in the middle of the production, Rolf Kühner, he died. He had an aneurysma in his yes, head. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he was t calling with uh, Detlef and he fell down on the sofa. And his friends thought, oh, he's uh, tired, he is sleeping. Yeah, but mm -hmm. he wasn't. He was collapsed. Michael, yeah. was there ever a question of discontinuing systems in blue because of his passing yes of course we were shocked and grief and everything uh, yes produced by mm -hmm. this uh, unbelievable uh, occurrence and uh, but we had this album that we had to finish all the tracks were already sung only few tracks with the high voices and we had a second album. It was this uh, from Mark Ashley, this Heartbreak Boulevard. It was not ready at mm -hmm. all. It was only six songs were produced. And yes, Ditlev and I, we took all our our power and uh, mm -hmm. and our confidence together, and we we produced these two albums to the end, and we. Mm. Took support by uh, Michael Backens, who is singing with us now again, and mm. and after that there was a very very long uh, pause. Yeah, yeah. In, 
Yeah, there was a very, maybe it was 2007 when Rolf died and uh, I think it was 2012 we got an offer to make mm -hmm. live performance in Poland, in Danzig and in the Plan and some other places. And then we asked Olaf Zenkbeil to join us for the for the live shows. We, we were making half playback. We took the old songs. We did not have any new song. We took the old mm -hmm. songs and then we performed uh, with our voices on these old songs. Yeah. Yes, and we had two or three performances and then okay we said this is a good uh, this is a good team again after five mm -hmm. or six years let's try let's try new songs and then we started to record songs and the, uh, the first mm -hmm. song that, that we recorded i think it was uh systems in blue for christmas uh, <laughs> yes and then we made then we made this EP with uh, Children of the Night and uh, Go Systems Go. This uh, this EP was called Back in Back in Blue, mm -hmm. and it's still the the most successful edition that we have. This uh, Children of the Night is our most successful song that we ever mm -hmm. recorded. Oh well, I have recently heard. Uh, a song that I think you performed with that uh, Jonathan guy from Paris, My Mystery. I think that's a very great song. I yeah, this, is, this is my song. It's some kind of autobiographic. <laughs> yeah, after I was married and uh, my mystery, she, uh, <laughs> she left me. She did not want to see me anymore. Mm. And I... I said I need to make a song, a very sad song about that. But it was a great song. I mean, yes, it's good. Really, I like yes. it. Have you performed it ever? Performed it live? On my balcony with a guitar. I've seen that one too. <laughs> <laughs> During Corona, everybody made uh, balcony concerts, and I said, yeah. "Okay, I joined that." And it was totally locked down. You could not. You could yeah. not make any step outside. So I decided mm -hmm. uh, in the evening at six o'clock, I will go to my balcony and perform a song. Uh, very mm -hmm. simple, just I'm, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a brilliant uh, guitar player, but I can accompany myself. And uh, so I made this yeah. balcony sessions. I think there are uh, about 80 or 90 songs <laughs> from my balcony. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I really got to look into those. <laughs> Comp compensation of uh, frustration, of Corona frustration. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, you perform a lot of songs live, and there's like one video, or maybe two, on YouTube where you performed the modern talking midley. Uh so why did you perform that? I mean, I, I don't know. I guess after the court thingy, I guess you'd rather want to forget about modern talking and all that. Like, uh, would you still perform those songs if you were live anywhere? Yes. We we uh, there was it was uh, it was still in the times when Rolf Köhler was living. We had some uh, we had some offers for live concerts. Mm -hmm. We were in Russia in, in Siberia. And we were in Tel Aviv in uh, Israel, and we performed, of course, our songs. But uh, uh, the fans they wanted uh, to see something from our history, and so we decided to make uh, to make medleys from only from only the choruses from modern talking, mm -hmm. and the choruses from. Uh, blue system. So we made a blue system medley, and we made a modern talking medley of the old, but only the parts what we have sung. Yes. So and this mm -hmm. was made for live performances, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, we we celebrated that on uh, on the stage, and the audience they liked it very much. So we decided uh, to use it uh, even without Rolf in the in the later days. 
and even mm -hmm. one day we decided to bring it on one on our albums as a gimmick just as a yeah a historical reminder yes recently i think not too long ago you've released the blue universe album yes our uh, latest one yes and that had the blue system midley and uh, so i was wondering if you ever wondered or, or ever considered doing the same thing but for the modern talking songs there is the modern talking medley but we did not uh, we did not release it i think there was no opportunity if you want i can send it you to you and you can use it maybe it's already on youtube it's no secret yes you could uh, send it to me i'd love to hear it and i mean you know what else i think a lot of people would love to here and i'm not sure if you have any access to these but like the the these vocals without the uh, backing the accompaniment i'm not sure if you still have any of these or e ever had because as you said you you don't have any copyright to those but the fans always wanted to hear these uh, no we don't have access to uh, to the, the old tracks that we sang but they are still used by Thomas Anders when he pre uh, performs live. And uh, the tracks... You see, I don't think so. I don't think they are, they, they are used at this point. They were used, but I think if, in 2016, he re-sang these songs with his, with his new uh, yeah, team. Yeah, but they don't, they don't sound like we. And I, yes, yes. I, I saw uh, one of the latest live performances that he made and it's definitely our audio track. So I, I think mm. he has an agreement with Luis Rodriguez and Dieter Bowen that he bought the license with for the old tracks to use it for live performances. It's possible. But how do you feel about this? Or how does your team feel about this? Like, how it's does it awful. feel for you? So yeah. now, we were cheated. Uh, and uh, yes. <laughs> Have you have you ever tried collaborating with Thomas after Modern Talking? Of course, in the beginning of uh, uh, Systems in Blue, we contacted uh, Thomas and uh, all the fans said, oh yes, th this would uh, make a dream come true if Thomas and uh, Systems in Blue will make a collaboration together. Mm -hmm. And we asked him several times if he wants to join us, but uh, his management said, no, we have other plans with Thomas and uh, they, no, they did not. And uh, yes, there was a second generation of choir after we had this prosecution with Dieter and we uh, ended and uh, quit this collaboration. This is uh, mm -hmm. Billy King and uh, Chris, live Spendoff, they sang uh, the falsetto choirs of the, I think, two or three last modern talking albums. Yeah. But they don't succeed to <laughs> yes, they didn't our sound. sound. Like you. No, it's not yeah. possible. So we, we mm -hmm. because we are unique, you know. Yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, you guys are, are the like, um, you're irreplaceable, I should say. And I think it was a huge mistake of Dieter cheating on you because I think if he wouldn't have maybe had these buyouts and gave you some sort of copyright, maybe you should have could have worked with them to the end. Of course we would have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I have but another that's question. Music business. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, it everywhere. Is. It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's a real cheating business. Everybody uh, yeah. tries to get the biggest uh, piece of the cake, you know. Yeah, it's it's really sad to see sometimes, especially with you guys, for example. It's uh, sad to see. Um, do you think, and um, I think I'm speaking for all the modern talking fans here. Do you think, or or would you be willing, or is are there any plans to make covers of those songs? No. Was that never planned? Uh, we did left, made one cover of You're My Heart, You're My Soul in 
jazz club style. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but this was only just a, just from a mood to make something totally different from this. And uh, the, but no, we don't have, have any intention to to cover modern talking songs. Why should we? They are perfect mm -hmm. as they are, and why why try to make this the second uh, the second edition? It's like uh, using your your tea twice or make three cups instead of one. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I suppose we could say that way. Yes, yes, yes. The old songs—they are perfect. Why should we? We sing it, and we have uh, we have these uh, evidences. And why should we copy ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, you're right. I mean, you did an amazing job back then, and I think you would do an amazing job now too. But it's already—I think that's something left in the past, and it should stay like that. Uh, I suppose. Yes, everything has its time. Yes. And, uh, yes, you know, you know our songs from Systems in Blue, and they are, yes, they are a bit like the uh, the structure of the old productions. Yes. Uh, yes. But yes, but every every song that we make uh, new, it's a new song. And mm -hmm. if you listen to uh, Out of the, the Blue or the old, uh, the first uh, LP, the, the Point of No Return, you will find a lot that you can, where you can find uh, uh, equal sounds or elements, but you will yes. always find new and in innovative elements. And this is our, this is our uh, aim to, uh, yes, to always, Add a new inspiration and of course not always yeah. chew the the same chewing gum you know well that's what Dieter did I mean all of his production sounded the same Jetta Liner and uh, Alanis is calling it sounded very similar yes yes and uh, yeah <laughs> uh, you he, have no words he took only he took he cared only really for the for the possible hits. And there were mm -hmm. maybe eight or nine t songs on the album that he did not care too much for it. He left the studio and let uh, the, the studio uh, company make uh, the sound and the, and the singing. And we made it alone. And Louis, he was our coach at that time. And uh, did and only, only cared for the, for the possible hits. And yeah. so some of the albums of Modern Talking, they are really boring. And uh, because there are only two or three songs, they are good. They are uh, produced uh, skillfully and carefully. And mm -hmm. when it came to, uh, system, to Blue System, it was even worse. There are some oh, albums, yeah. he tried to, to jump on the trains and on the trends of the time he in the middle of the 19th there came this techno music from berlin and uh, mm -hmm. he tried to he tried to use tech, techno elements and he mm -hmm. copied this and backstreet boys and he copied this and this and that and uh, yes he also used a rapper for the later albums of modern talking which this i was thought second, this was the second edition of modern talking uh, he yes. took the old tracks and he mm -hmm. he made a little pitch on them electronically yes, I, I, he heard, that. I heard that i heard that higher and a little bit faster mm -hmm. and then he added uh, mr singleton as a rapper and yeah. so yeah so he had a brown person <laughs> on the stage and uh, he could dance and he could perform his rapping yeah. and uh, this was innovation for that time yeah well, you know, I mean, uh, Dieter still, I think, a few years ago released like uh, a re remastered versions of these old songs. And again, your voices were intact. And also Thomas's. I wonder what contract did they have with Thomas, you know, but I suppose. Oh, I'm not into it. I don't I don't have any contact and any uh, view behind the scene. 
Of course, of course. Um, but do you still think that even though everything that Dieter did and the cheating and everything, do you still think that uh, working together with him was something good for you, despite all that bad? We enjoyed it to uh, to be part of a successful project, but uh, on the other hand, you could go to the supermarket, to the filling station, to the you could uh, go to holidays, and everywhere you went, you heard yourself mm -hmm. singing, and you were aware that it does not make you rich at all. So it <laughs> yeah. was always a little bit disappointing. Yes. Of course. I mean, it still is. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure, well, the radios here still play their songs, Brother Louis. And... Of course they do. Yeah. Uh, worldwide, I can see it. Uh, I can see it everywhere. That, and uh, I have a contract with a, uh, with a company in Germany. It's GVL. They, uh, they uh, get money from the radio stations and for mm -hmm. for computers and uh, digital copying and they have a real real report on everything all songs where i myself uh, was into and i uh, yes i have their uh, i have arts uh, yes what how to call it it's some kind of stats that i uh, that i made charts Yes, and they see what the radio stations play, and I get uh -huh. a few cents for when they when they broadcast songs where I perform. Uh, mm -hmm. I get some cents, and uh, yeah, in the end of the year, sometimes it's hundreds, and sometimes it's a, a little bit above thousand euro that I can get from that from the radio stations. Even we're we're speaking of the modern talking songs, yeah? Yes, even modern talking songs from the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if they play it today. Well, I'm pretty sure they do play some... Well, you know, the, mo mo the more popular ones. But I think there were a lot of uh, later albums that were also good, which you probably don't remember because they weren't that important. But uh, even in the later albums, there were better songs, I think. I uh, I have to admit I don't uh, remember all songs that I sang. It's of so, course, it's so many, and uh, it's not that I listen to modern talking each and every day or Blue System. Yes, uh, yes. I know that we always made a good made a good performance, and we never made shit when we came <laughs> and sang. It was always professional and it was always from our hearts and with love and with a soul and with a message to the fans that uh, of yes, that we send love and peace to the universe. <laughs> of course. And keep doing albums, Michael, and uh, with your team, because it's amazing your voices are amazing gifts. You're composing and writing and all that that's in your team. It's just wonderful, wonderful songs. And we want to see more, honestly. I told we you that to there more. will be anniversary, anniversary yes. 20th, and there will yes. be compilations and maybe, maybe new songs. And maybe we find old pictures. And we are already preparing that so that the community will will have a, a nice present for our 20th anniversary. Well, you know, oh yeah, speaking of which, another question I wanted to ask, because I can hear a small accent on your voice, and you know, I, that's normal, but sometimes, or oftentimes, the accent disappears in the singing. What, why is that? What do you think? And not just in your particular case, but in a lot of cases, uh, let's say foreigner singers sing in English. And uh, when they speak normally in an interview, you can hear a sort of accent. But when they sing, it's uh, fully perfect pronunciation. Oh, I have a, 
I, I have a, a vision of the sound of English and uh, I try my very best to, to speak without any accent. Of course, everybody who is not native speaker has a, some kind of accent, but when we perform, yes. we, we just uh, did our best to, to have a, a original English sounding uh, lyrics that we perform. And yeah. if we succeeded to do so, then thank you very much. Yes, it was wonderful. And I mean, you're, you still are. And do you think you could still hit those high pitch pitches like in the 80s? You know, Atlantis is calling, Sherry, Sherry, lady, any of that? You think you could no, still no, pull no. off? <laughs> no, I, I've, I, I myself have lost maybe two tones. And now mm -hmm. I can sing maybe... I can hit the D. Uh, it's three, three semitones lower, my voice now. But uh, we have, we have always a, a third person who is younger than we, and uh, <laughs> and Olaf could Olaf could hit these high, these higher tones, and our uh, now our our new. Uh, member of Systems in Blue, it's Michael Backens who already helped us uh, with uh, finishing the album Heartbreak Boulevard for Mark Ashley in uh, mm -hmm. 2007. So uh, we asked him, uh, Olaf did not want to uh, perform and uh, work together with us anymore two years late ago. And yes, then we wanted to continue and we asked Michael, and he mm. has said, okay, I make it. And he's, uh, he's maybe 20 years younger than we, and he is already, uh, he's still in the high voices. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we can okay. still continue, uh, uh, succeed to continue our, our sound because the, the melody, I can still sing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been I've seen I've been following Systems in Blue lately, and there was like a song that was released recently. You collaborated on it from Dorina Sante Santa. Oh yeah, oh, and yes. you did the choruses there. This is um, <laughs> yeah. This is the beginning of Chapter Three of Systems in Blue. I got the uh, I got the request from uh, this Dorina. She came, oh, maybe it was one year ago or beginning of this year. And uh, she asked me if uh, we would like to sing a choir for her. And uh, I said, why not? We did already sing for other uh, artists. And uh, yes. And it was just uh, after Olaf Sengbal, he left us. And I... Yes, this was the ignition. I called Michael Backens, are you ready to sing with me? And Detlef uh, for a German Schlager, uh, Sängerin, singer. And uh, he said yes. And then we made, then we made the choir for uh, Dorina. And when we noticed that this is good collaboration and we succeed to uh, to record a very good sounding choir that sounds like Systems in Blue, we decided to record and release a new single for Systems in Blue. And this was Look Up. Detlef had an idea for harmonies and melody. And I sat at home and, and wrote the lyrics and evolved the melody. And uh, yeah, when this, process was done we came together and recorded uh, look up and oh it's okay uh, already uh, yeah i think more than a half year mm -hmm. old it's rather successful people mm -hmm. like to listen and now this tony abate from italy from spatial vox he made a remix it was idea from johan perrier and he made the connection to spatial vox 
and they agreed to make a remix for us. And this will be soon our next release. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I mean, it was great to hear you do choruses again, because, you know, you've been able to kind of recapture the same kind of voice for this uh, Dorina uh, yes. song. Schlager. Yes, it's a nice song. It's in German. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we give it a, a little bit spirit of the 80s. So yes, why not? Yes. And I have, I think, one last question, and that's related to you, Rolf, and Detlef. So we know that you did the high-pitched parts, and uh, Rolf, I think, he did the deeper pitch pitches, yeah? No, he, w he was in the high part, too. Uh, yes. Already. Yes, yes, yes. But he also sang in deeper tones. Of course, he? we all do. You all did? Yes, So, So all of you did everything. Yes, in all, in all uh, levels. I told you, we make always yes. one melody unisono, first harmony unisono, second harmony unisono, below or up. Yeah, yes, yes. And this is the procedure of uh, evolving a choir. We always sing with three or four persons uh, unisono, one line, one, the melody, the harmony and the third harmony. Yes. Well, that explains everything. That's why all of your songs sounded so great. And uh, yeah, we're, we just, we're looking forward to more, as I said. And thank you so much for joining me on this interview, Michael. Is there anything you'd like to promote? Anything uh, upcoming except that anniversary next year? No, I cannot tell too much. I What I... What I am able to tell, uh, I told already, and people should uh, stay tuned and watch our channels on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And we have, an, we have a website, and you will always have new information uh, step by step by step. And uh, so everybody, Stay in peace, stay tuned, and stay healthy.